welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. With me today in the studio are my guests, Lisa Waxman and Carolyn Nagao Marcotte. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, we're glad Thank to be you. here. So we're gathered here today to talk about the Community Living Options Program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. This is a private pay program that provides a menu of services that's individualized to meet people's needs. And the two experts on this program are in the studio with us today, so we're going to learn a lot about it. I guess just to start, um, I'd start by asking, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Community Living Options Program and what it does? Oh, sure. So Somerville Cambridge Elder Services started this program about two years ago. We were receiving a number of calls from primarily out-of-town relatives who um, felt that their loved ones, their elder loved ones, um, needed increased oversight and involvement. Maybe there was a um, change in a medical condition or um, a decrease in um, cognitive functioning. So they were really concerned about their loved ones and they needed some intensive oversight for the loved ones. Um, there were a number of tasks to, uh, to attend to and uh, some resources that were needed that um, the out-of-town relatives felt like they didn't have access to or knowledge about. So they reached out to us and since case management has always been a role that Somerville Cambridge Elder Service has played so well. Um, we just felt like this was a natural offshoot of what we'd already been doing. And some of our social workers, our clinical social workers and nurses, felt this was a real natural extension of their role. And for those who don't know you, you are both clinical social workers. Yes. And I, just in brief, what, um, what are your roles with the program? Uh, what, do you, what, your, what role do you play with CLO? So as social workers, we um, go in and we do an assessment of an elder's needs. Um, oftentimes that assessment is in conjunction with what the family member believes the needs are, but we like to balance what we see and what the elder feels that they need help with, with what the family sees the issues as. Um, so we like to start where the, where the elder is, and um, which is traditional social work. Um, and we have to build rapport rather rapidly with an elder because this is a new kind of relationship since it's so intensive. Mm -hmm. um, at first, it's almost daily contact that we have with an older adult or their family. So um, it's very important that we use our skills of rapport building. That's excellent. And there's a term associated with community living options that I haven't heard a lot elsewhere around the agency. It's called a aging life care manager. Can you tell me a little bit about when the aging life care manager does? Um, so this is a role that was traditionally called a geriatric care manager and just in the industry has been um, sort of changed to aging life care manager to better reflect the wide range of services that are provided. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of see our role as really being problem solvers for the family. We start with an assessment and we identify what those needs are and we sort of find the holes in the person's care um, where the needs are that aren't being met, and then we work with the family to make a plan to meet those needs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in some ways it's very similar to what we do through a program such as uh, home care, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the eligibility requirements. But there's also like another sort of level mm -hmm. to the level of services that's provided. What are some of the common services that people receive through the program? There's the assessment and the care plan. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the other things that people might potentially plan through this program? So um, many times we'll get a call because their um, a loved one is in the hospital mm -hmm. and um, a, a relative wants to plan a safe discharge. And oftentimes if um, an elder's condition is has deteriorated, they need a lot of oversight as, as um, in addition to what they're going to get from the VNA and some of our state subsidized services. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they are, um, older adults need somebody, they need an advocate to check on, in, on them daily to make sure that everything is coming together mm -hmm. and somebody who can hold all the different services together and manage all that. Um, we also have a number of clients who want to live independently and quite honestly, without the assistance of an a ACLM, um, ALCM, it would be very difficult um, and th sometimes we will supplement that type of oversight with what a family caregiver can do, um, who is local or, or who maybe can come into town, um, and we can work together on that. Um, we, our goal is to keep, you know, help the elder stay in whatever environment he or she wants to be in. 
and oftentimes that's in the home that they've lived in. Um, but there are a number of things that need to be attended to. Um, there may be um, um, house repairs that need to be attended to. There may be pets that need to be taken care of. Um, of course, the elders' health and mental health and um, social activities, sometimes that those become get to be a little bit too difficult to manage. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we see each other, ourselves, as executive secretaries because mm -hmm. we can help people plan out their schedules um, and maybe plan their appointments, go with them to doctor's appointments, oversee some of the care that's given, um, and we can um, work with their providers to make sure that um, the care that is recommended from a medical standpoint is going to reflect what an elder can um, reasonably accommodate in the home. Great. So it really does sound like it very much dovetails with a lot of what we do in our agency's mission, which is helping people, your life, your way at home. Mm -hmm. I think that one thing that's really special about this program, though, is that we're not um, constrained in any way by any kind of state programs, that we're really able to be with the family and with the elder where they're at and kind of work with whatever goals that they have and make that work. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. And sometimes we, be, we become a very close confidant mm -hmm. of, um, of our clients because it is such an involved um, kind of relationship. Just to give an example, most of our clients we see or talk to several times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and we become, we become very involved in their lives, and it's a very special kind of relationship. They learn to rely on us and call upon us. And oftentimes we hear, you know, I don't want to burden my children with this, but this is on my mind. And we can really help them think through some of the issues that they're having in their life. Mm -hmm. We can really serve as the point person for the family to alleviate some of that stress mm -hmm. for them. That's really great. And, and one thing you're bringing to mind for me, it's interesting, as someone who's kind of a lay person who came into the agency, there's all these things that you guys do mm -hmm. that you're pros at because you do it every day and it's what you do. If you're... Uh, a lay person trying to help out your mother or mm -hmm. something, it can be a little overwhelming to pull together all the different things mm -hmm. that you guys do, you know, professionally every yep. day. Yeah, so that's true. It's definitely a lot of value there because I know if I had to arrange all the things that you guys do for my mm -hmm. mother, I would be a little overwhelmed and I probably wouldn't know where to start. Right, and we have those relationships. That's what that is one of the um, benefits of you know there there are geriatric care managers. Um, in many different environments, but one of the advantages of working with us at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services is we have ready access to our peers and our colleagues within the agency who can provide resources for health insurance counseling, for um, we have relationships with vendors who provide in-home care, um, with transportation companies, with hospital systems. So all of that all of that um, is just a phone for call for us, but for a family member, it could be hours and hours of research mm -hmm. and you know, opening wrong doors left and right if they don't know who to call and who to ask. Expertise is important, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, that wraps it up for our first segment. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm Nathan Lamb, your host, and with me today are social workers Lisa Waxman. Hello. And Carolyn Nagam Marcotte. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me. This is great. Today we're discussing the Community Options Living Options Program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. This is a private pay program that provides a wide menu of services that are tailored to meet an individual's needs. And there's a lot of things this program does, and it's not easy to explain in 25 words or less. But if we were going to try to do that, we've got the two people who could do it right here in the studio. So I'm very excited. Now, we discussed the wide range of scenarios in which you guys can help in the first segment. And we have really stringent privacy requirements. So we can't actually mention specifics that would identify anyone. Mm -hmm. But we can talk in general about some of the scenarios that, that you guys deal with in working with the program. And uh, I'd very much be interested in hearing a little bit about how things can go. Sure. You can. Sure. Um, so, so I think one thing that we help a lot with is transitions, whether that's um, you know a move to an assisted living facility or a nursing home. 
or maybe staying at home, which a lot of people do want to do, and just bringing in different services so that that can actually be possible for the person. Oftentimes the family notices that things really aren't working out anymore, but they're not really sure why. So we're able to kind of go in and figure out what it is the person needs and how we can keep them at home if that's what they want or how we can walk them through uh, the whole process of relocating from doing the research about the facilities to touring the facilities, the application process, um, going through the insurance, all of that um, we can help with. Um, so one example that comes to mind is um, a client I have whose family felt that she couldn't stay home anymore that she wasn't safe and that she should be moving in with one of her daughters or an assisted living facility, which she did not want to do. She really had a high level of need, so we had to um, bring in a lot of services for her, but we were able to make that happen. So some of those services were um, some home care services, so having private aids, arranging for her to have transportation, um, and because her family lived out of state, she needed a lot of help with the medical advocacy stuff which is really a higher level of case management that you could get with any other program. But um, I was able to go to her doctor's appointments with her um, and really stay informed about what was going on and help her be medication compliant and with all the follow-up and go through that whole process so that the family didn't have to worry about it. So having those services in place has allowed her to stay at home, which is what she wants, but also giving her family the peace of mind that, um, that she's going to be safe at home. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a real win-win. And uh, from your end, can you tell me a little bit about some of how it goes? It's a, is it a, usually a straightforward process, or is there a lot of twists and turns that you have when you're going through? Yeah, there are a lot of twists and turns. Like Carolyn said, a lot of you know, a lot of times we have to go through the motions with an older adult and their family if if they're thinking about um, another placement, assisted living, or a nursing home. Um, somebody needs to coordinate all that, especially if there's a home to sell and. There's moving that needs to happen, so it's you know it's researching um, movers mm -hmm. um, and looking at different facilities, making sure that it's going to be a right fit for a person. Um, if if an individual decides that he or she isn't ready to go, that's fine. We um, work with them on staying in, in their homes, mm -hmm. but oftentimes what we see with our folks is they just can't keep up with the the things, the day to day things that would re would help them stay at home. Um, Carolyn mentioned medication compliance. Um, sometimes our clients need us to call and remind them to take their medications, mm -hmm. and that's part of the care plan. We have um, I have a client who I call regularly to remind her to take her medications, and she's happy to, for the phone call. It's a daily check-in. Um, other clients can't remember to refill their medications, so we keep track of what needs to be refilled, when it, when it needs to be refilled. Um, if it's a pharmacy that doesn't deliver, we can go and pick up the medication. Um, and then we can also go to the doctor's appointments and help the, uh, provide, the medical provider be more aware of how it's going in the home. I had a client who um, was having trouble using eardrops that she was prescribed because um, she had a lot of arthritis. So when we went to go see the doctor, um, she told the doctor she'd been taking the eardrops and I knew that she wasn't. So I had explained to um, the doctor that, that she was having a difficult time um, putting the eardrops in your ears because she was because of her fingers um, mm -hmm. not being so nimble and this was information the doctor needed to find a different type of bottle for her that would be easier to use mm -hmm. um, which he was able to do and now she has a pretty simple bottle that basically the, the drops fall right out into into her ear um, a small thing that can be a big deal can be a right. big deal yeah because she had quite a bit of um, buildup in her ear that needed to be attended to um, there's, there's just a lot for people to keep track of. Um, mm -hmm. Pets, you know, I've had, I've, I've had a client who had a pet who the pet needed to go to the vet. And um, if there's anything wrong with the pet, there's often follow-up that's needed. And um, many times we just need to keep the, um, the um, treatment schedule up um, for the pet. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of um, getting, in, getting in help with somebody who can help take care of the pet mm -hmm. um, or bring the pet to the vet um, on behalf of the elder if they can't get there themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we, you know, we've also worked with people who unfortunately did, did decide that they, well, well fortunately, whatever the, their feeling was, that they wanted to move on and go into a nursing home. And we've been involved um, in having 
their um, apartments um, sold and um, their items um, distributed. We've helped with that. Mm -hmm. um, moving out of their their homes into uh, their new locations mm -hmm. um, and we will stay involved with somebody if they move to a, a nursing home or an assisted living and oftentimes our work is different because now we are being their advocate in the facility if the family member can't get there as often as they'd like mm -hmm. make sure that their care is provided um, in, in an appropriate way we attend care plan meetings um, I have a client who I shop for. Mm -hmm. um, she's in a nursing home and she often needs new toiletries. Um, she likes to have new clothes seasonally. So she likes me to, she always has a list for me so I go out and do her shopping for her. Mm -hmm. um, and really whatever the elder wants that we can, um, you know, it's feasible for us to do, we're happy to do it. That's great. Now you mentioned, you kind of alluded to um, options and planning for the future. Um, is helping people uh, do advanced planning mm -hmm. also one of the services that you provide? Yes, one of the first things that we do with families is we ask if there are um, advanced directives in place. Um, we want to know if there is a durable power of attorney, if there's a health care proxy, um, what the elders' wishes are. Um, God forbid they need to be resuscitated if they want a do not resuscitate or a MOLST document. So. Oftentimes, we'll talk to family members and they'll say that they really haven't had the opportunity or don't know how to bring up the subject, um, even around funeral planning um, and, and just kind of those um, very necessary conversations that have to happen mm -hmm. with older adults, especially if their health is declining. So that's one of the ways that we get involved, especially since we, we are so intensively involved and it becomes a very close relationship. Um, both family members and the older adult like that we're involved. We are kind of that middle person um, who can lead those discussions um, and, and ease the decision making between, you know, parents and their children. So on one hand, it's, it's um, making sure the advanced plan is in place, but also facilitating the discussion, which might not always be easy. Yes. So, okay, so that, and that is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing that I see in all the marketing materials for this is that there's 24-7 support. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So we have um, an on-call line that's available 24-7 um, where the individual or their family could call in with whatever um, issues may arise, whatever concerns they have, and they'll be able to actually speak to a clinician to address those issues. That's great. Mm -hmm. So basically, whenever they need a hand, mm -hmm. CLO mm -hmm. is available for them there. Yeah, and, and a situation where that might occur is, God forbid, an older adult falls, mm -hmm. and it's the middle of the night or early in the morning or on the weekend, and they're taken to the hospital. If their family member is out of town, we are obviously closer. So we can be called to get to the hospital, get to the emergency room, be with the older adult, and help... Um, help reassure them and, and be involved in the initial care planning that's involved in the hospital. Now you've mentioned a couple times communicating with the family. How does that, in general, how does that arrangement go between communicating with the person receiving care mm -hmm. and then the family? I, I suppose that's probably all hashed out up front for how much communication mm -hmm. back and forth because the the um, children might want to hear fairly regularly yeah. how their uh, uh, parent is going. So is that something that's just sort of figured out um, at the beginning? Yes, it really depends on you know what the fam family wants and what the elder wants. Mm -hmm. um, some people just want a, a weekly update of anything or if there's been any changes. Some people want a phone call. Um, some family members just want a quick text, you know. Um, especially if it's somebody who can't visit as much for whatever reason. They don't have to be living out of town. They may have a very demanding work schedule mm. or um, family concerns of, of their own, you know, with their children. Um, sometimes they just want a real quick word. I visited mom. I visited dad. Things are looking great. It's very reassuring to know that somebody with an objective viewpoint has, is visiting. So, um, and, and sometimes, sometimes uh, family members want to get involved in a particular task themselves, mm -hmm. and that's certainly up to them. Um, and you know, we will uh, support them in that work 
if they want our help, um, and or or we can take over at any point that they feel like they can't continue. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an evolving thing. Um, I know when family members go on vacation, especially if they go out of vacation mm -hmm. out of the country, they are so happy that we're around and that we have 24-hour um, availability mm -hmm. because they feel reassured that if there's not a neighbor nearby or another relative, that somebody is around who can kind of be there to, if God forbid, anything happens. Yeah, we're very flexible about that. So some clients I have, um, they really want me to be their partner in navigating the whole elder care system, and they want to be very involved in every decision made, um, and they just want that expertise of having a clinical social worker by their side. Um, so we're happy to do that. Um, I also have clients who have uh, distant family members who live out of state, and they maybe don't have anyone, any children or spouses or anyone who's very, who's you know, able to be super involved. Um, and then they really just want to, you know, need to know basis and are very grateful that we're able to take over the care um, and make sure that uh, nothing has to go to them that they're not prepared to handle. Okay. That's great. And you mentioned connection with elder services, and maybe that's a good time to discuss service area. Yeah. Um, we are Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. That's yeah. the organization. But Community Living Options has a slightly different, slightly larger service area. Yep. We, yeah, we, we, we do have a number of clients in Somerville and Cambridge. We do service the Metro Boston area. Um, one of the things that I think it's important for people to know is if, um, it's, a, if it's a client who lives in Somerville and Cambridge, um, we will offer, the, and they need in-home care, we will offer them state subsidized services that they're eligible for. Um, that's another way that we're a little bit different maybe than other geriatric care managers. Um, by knowing a person's uh, financial um, eligibility, we know what they're eligible for. If somebody's eligible for Mass Health, that's something that we want to make sure that they apply for. If somebody's eligible for our state subsidized services, we want to make sure that they get those services first. Before they pay privately for any care, um, we can use the resources we have within our agency to make sure that they're getting whatever they can, whatever they're eligible for, for free first. Um, and then the folks who live outside of our agency um, area, outside of Somerville and Cambridge, we also work with other um, home care agencies, um, Mystic Valley Elder Services, North Shore Elder Services, and the like, uh, to hook them up with those agencies while we work with them. It's an important detail, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, I think the other one was, oh, I had one more and I completely forgot, how embarrassing. Anything else you'd like to add? I think that's it. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this segment. We'll uh, come back in a moment and wrap things up. All right, so we're kind of winding down in time here, but uh, before we go, if you could give us just one more example of uh, sort of a scenario that CLO deals with, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so we have many clients who have Alzheimer's or other dementia, um, and we have developed a lot of expertise in that area, and we're able to really problem solve around some of those issues that come up. Um, one example is a, our couple that I work with where the, the wife has pretty substantial dementia that kind of came on suddenly and her um, husband unfortunately isn't able to manage um, to manage her condition and to manage things around the house anymore without her um, you know being able to be an equal partner mm -hmm. um, so I've been able to um, work with them well our agency worked with them to begin with and got them um, set up with a power of attorney to manage their money mm -hmm. um, and keep their assets safe and then um, working with them, I've been able to make sure that the, um, the wife was able to get the treatment that she needed. So actually, she didn't have a diagnosis at first. She just sort of suddenly started to have a lot of memory issues and a lot of anxiety because she was having the memory issues. Um, and she hadn't seen her doctor in nine months. Mm -hmm. So I had to help her um, you know, get an appointment to the doctor and see the doctor. Um, and she wasn't medication compliant because she didn't have the memory capacity to be able to take her medications. So I had to work with her to develop a system where she could actually manage taking her medications. Um, so several months later now she has, um, she's seen her doctor and she's going regularly. 
she's getting the treatments that she needs and she's taking her medications as prescribed. So it's been um, a huge change in her affect and her behavior mm -hmm. because of it. Absolutely. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. So I'm going to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show and telling us a little bit about CLO. Yeah. If you'd like to learn more about community living options, uh, we have information available on the um, CLO section of the Somerville Cambridge Elder Services website. That's eldercare.org, and there's a private pay tab, which has all the information about private pay programs. And in one final note, I've been informed that it's the 175th anniversary since the founding of Somerville. And we are right over at 61 Medford Street in Somerville, so I would like to wish our host city a happy birthday, and hopefully we'll be here for as much as possible of the next 175 years. Um, for Aging Well, I'm Nathan Lamb. Thanks again for joining us.